Hello. In this third talk on uh, the uh, uh, radiation uh, and radiation burns in interventional radiology, I just want to say a few words about radiation burns themselves, what I believe all practitioners in medical imaging should know about this obviously important topic. Uh, a radiation burn is deemed to be a deterministic effect. What that means is that there is a threshold dose. If you're well below or below the threshold dose, the effect just does not occur, which is really very good news. And if you're well above the threshold, it will occur in everybody who is irradiated. A secondary factor is that quite often the severity of the effect can increase with increasing radiation dose and that is certainly too true of radiation burns as the dose goes up the severity will actually increase. Uh, nowadays these are sometimes called a harmful tissue reactions. Here's an example of a patient who we believe was exposed to about 20 gray during a cardiac procedure. This is quite a long time, several months after the radiation uh, exposure. And we can see a, a horrific a radiation burn that was actually treated uh, with a major skin graft. Uh, let me summarize what we know about radiation burns. On the left, I'm going to just show you some uh, ionizing radiation uh, fields that have resulted in radiation burns. I would say up to 2 gray. 2 gray is an effective uh, threshold in the sense that below it, I guarantee you there will be no radiation effect. Between 2 and 5, you might get a transient erythema, something that might come and uh, uh, go. But at 5 gray, I would expect you to get a real radiation burn that I'll be discussing in this presentation. Between 5 and 10 grays, although these may require uh, medical intervention, they're r likely to be relatively modest. Above 10 gray, uh, you will get major radiation burns, dry and moist esquamation and medical intervention is likely to be protracted and relatively major. Uh, the radiation burns don't appear immediately. They typically appear 10 days after the radiation exposure. And there's a good biological explanation for this. You have dividing cells in the basal layer to certain depth. These cells then migrate upwards and are sloughed off. And that whole cycle takes about 10 days. So it's important to understand that these effects occur uh, typically within uh, the first couple of weeks of the radiation exposure. Just as an aside, we also have epilation. If you're doing interventional neuro work and the threshold dose for temporary epilation is currently taken to be about 3 gray. The, if the hair regrows, it usually regrows gray. Uh, permanent epilation, uh, the threshold dose that I've been using for the last while is about 7 gray. But remember that patients can vary in their radiosensitivity. An unintended cumulative dose in excess of 15 gray uh, similar to the cardiac case that I showed you earlier, is a major event. Uh, the Joint Commission would ascribe this as a sentinel event. It would require a full root cause analysis. You would be visited by an inspector of the Joint Commission, and uh, I have no doubt that you would hear an awful lot about it. Um, I think it is of interest to know how likely one of these serious burns is, not a, a radiation effect, but a serious one that I would say in excess of 10 gray. I often in my courses ask people about it. They usually have no idea, so they have to guess. And I'm not saying that I have great data, but my best estimate is about one in 10,000 cases. And that's the number that I would believe to be true. If you're interested in the topic of radiation burns, uh, uh, Steve Bolter and his colleagues have an excellent review article entitled Review of Radiation Effects on Skin and Hair. 
published in Radiology about seven years ago, 2010, volume 254, page 326. That is the definitive article. If you think you might run into a radiation burn and you're interested in the medical aspects of it, then that is the definitive article. So uh, if you have any questions on this third of the uh, four presentations on uh, radiation burns, uh, feel free to drop me an email. Um, can be reached internally at Dartmouth, but um, my Hotmail account is one that I monitor on a continuous basis, Walter Huda at hotmail.com. Thank you.